Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of building the 56 Chevy 210 Handyman Wagon. So as you all saw in part one, um, there was definitely a lot of work that needed to be done. And this one, we actually got most of the work done. This is the third primer session here with filling. We had to fill a lot of pinholes around the emblems, around the chrome, um, some parts in the doors where there was actually um, a little a dip in it. I had to fill a lot back here and also rescribe all the lines around the body. There's still some work needs to be done. As you can see, there's a little bit that needs to be done around here on the trim itself. Same thing on this side. Pull the entry out for a minute here. Still some work needs to be done here on the inner fender wheel on both sides. I was able to add some styrene and it fits pretty well. Uh, some pinholes in here still that came up after the primer session after me filling most of this in, sanding it out as you saw in the last one, a lot of pinholes that were there. Um, so definitely gonna be done. I did sand some of the body, it made it a little bit thinner in areas as well, so it fit a lot better. And I'm actually very happy with how this body has turned out thus far. And for the for the interior, uh, we'll get to the tuck and roll here in a minute, but I had to extend this out. Um, and also had to uh, fill it and add some of the sides as you can see. So it's a little bit thicker than what actually came uh, here in the kit for this resin. Uh, I had to extend this piece out. Still a lot of work needs to be done here, hopefully with one or two more primer sessions. This will be finished and everything will be finished as well. For the tuck and roll, so you'll see pictures right here of the tuck and roll that I did. But this tuck and roll, um, it was fun. It was. Uh, half round styrene from Evergreen Styrene, and then also just a full round. I think it was number 100 at a round for, uh, for the trim as well. So this one I'm actually looking really good with. Have some more issues I need to correct here on both sides and the inner part of the end here to fill those gaps and those seams that I created. Other than that, it looks pretty good. Um, with it actually fitting in here, uh, it actually fits very, very well, very nice overall. Uh, we can see that actually fits up to that back door here. Uh, the interior piece that goes along here is actually being worked on right now. I actually had to put it under a candle and actually bend it somewhat so it actually would fit as this um, has more of a bend than the Nomad does. So um, that was something as a nuance I wasn't expecting and didn't realize until I started building and getting everything fit together. Um, along with the body here, uh, you'll also see the other parts of the tuck and roll. So here is so here's the one piece of the tuck and roll. Uh, definitely a little more needs to be done, filling in, uh, taking out those the issues in with it, and making it nice and crisp. Um, and even up here, filling just a little bit more in to make it to where it actually looks nice overall. But very happy with how it came out. My first tuck and roll, so I'm really happy with that. And then here's the the full. Uh, bench seat in the front so I need to just take a little bit fill, fix a little bit here um, define it up here and then just correct some small intricate problems here probably one more priming session of both of these and we'll be done as well some parts did get painted as I did need to in order to get uh, the, the bases down so here we have the rear end with leaf springs this is in its final uh, color here, which is the gloss black. Very high that came out. I actually had, oh, I have five or six rattle cans I needed to use up, so I still had Tamiya black, uh, gloss black and rattle cans. So I used it on this guy right here, and then also here I used it on the interior, the chassis. I did glue the gas tank with the tire, spare tire, in before I actually did the painting. Just saved me some time. I wasn't using that paint in the spot where I didn't need it. I could use it actually on this piece and be better. Um, underneath here actually has some copyright text and I didn't want to save it off. So I was on here, covers up right away. So I'm very happy with how this came out. Um, looking at this actually on the interior. Um, it actually will get the interior to uh, work right where I want it to be. I realized that me filling this all the way in w wouldn't be useful because you wouldn't see this because the tire um, fitting in the well here would not be seen. 
um, in the interior you wouldn't see as much because it would be a lot more wiring and stuff with the engine going on in here but this is how it looks thus far I'm really happy with it um, definitely uh, I like the way it sits so far in its stance that I've done so far done with it and I've also started to paint the chrome pieces so these are all in the Alclad uh, black base uh, these are all going to be the chrome pieces. A lot of this build um, has stainless steel and polished aluminum. Not much chrome. Uh, chrome on this entire build for the one on one to one is the grill, the front and back bumpers, and the hood emblems. So looking at the kit here, look at the sorry, looking at the one to one here, you can see some pictures of the exterior, and it actually will be a fun build to utilize different metal colors and make sure everything matches as the as the pictures i want this to be as close as a replica as i can get it um, within the time frame i have i have a month to build this and i'm actually going out to see my grandparents here at the end of the month in april so i need to uh, get this build going and get it started so here we are in uh, the second week of it and i had six weeks to build this so um, it's gonna be a fun build. Uh, I did speak. I did uh, speak to Jamiston, and I did get some stuff from Scale Finishes. So I did reach out to him, and I got uh, the Chevy Orange 57 to 76 for the engine. I got the white, which is the Chevrolet India Ivory that matches the interior and exterior of this car. And then I also got the Chevrolet Tropical Turquoise, which is uh, what the color of the car is. Um, I do get my, most of my stuff in gloss enamels because it's what I use. I'm happy utilizing it. I've used enamel since I started building roughly seven, eight, nine years ago. So it's just what I use, but I'm happy that he gives, has both base coats and gloss enamels. Uh, I also will be using his clear so we have his new honey gloss which is a gloss enamel clear coat and then for the paints as well as the clear coat i will be adding this which is the gloss enamel hardener it is 10 parts paint to one part hardener this is only one ounce here but it helps your enamels dry quicker harden better give more shine as well which is what i want out of this i want it to be um, a shiny show quality uh, build so this will help with that I also will be utilizing um, some of the Model Master uh, metal uh, metalizers as well. So I'll be using brass, and then I'll also be using the stainless steel buffing. This will be for all the exterior pieces that are stainless steel. I'll be using the chrome for the chrome parts. I'll be using see here if I can get in there you go polished aluminum for um, some of the interior as well as some of the engine bay it has some polished aluminum to it and then magnesium here is just for the tires the tires are actually magnesium it's so I'm very happy to went out and got a whole bunch of alclads uh, I do have aluminum as I do have some dull aluminum the actual uh, t10 transmission is dull aluminum as well as the manifold so I'm not sure I'm going to use the metalizer aluminum non-buff, or I'm going to use the aluminum from Alclad. Um, most, all Alclads require a base of black, white, gray. They tell you in the back here what bases they allow that work best. Metalizers don't. So I may just use the metalizer, but I'm also probably going to use it on a spoon and see how they actually both look and figure out which one looks better, more realistic, and then go from there. So I utilize this when I usually do my builds. It's a, a double-decker storage compartment, so I have it to where it stores uh, my parts. And then once I start getting them ready to go, I then put tape down that tells you what color they all need to be so I can store them and do it. Uh, the drive shaft here is actually a metal piece of k KNS tubing, so that's ready to go. Um, put, it back, put it back in the bag here. Uh, my semi my semi gloss parts are actually my semi gloss black parts are already painted, so we have the radiator painted in semi gloss black, as well as the bottom part of the chassis. 
and then just some other parts that are in here. Uh, these will stay semi-gloss um, for the most part. Some will have some detail painting to them um, and wiring as well. Uh, here we have some parts that haven't been painted yet either, so those are the ones that will be going into the body color. Uh, we have a steering column, some of the shocks, uh, brake pedals. We have some of the radiators will be um, flat black. I may actually just take some actual uh, black wiring, the thick cable, and mimic this and then use that instead of the actual uh, radiator uh, hoses that come in the kit. And then down here, on the second level, we have our other parts that are ready to go that need to be painted. So we have um, all of our stainless steel exterior parts that were chrome once are now here. Um, we have our brass or polished aluminum. We have our tires. We have our glass sitting here uh, ready to go, including our red clears as well. So we have everything really taken to figure out what colors need to be and get them organized. So when I'm painting, I paint in an organized way and don't waste time as, you know, got, I only have so much time left before it has to be out and to California it goes. So I'm very happy to be working on this um, and just get it going. So the engine, I utilize a stock engine, but then I was able to find some valve covers. These are actual resin casted valve covers that say Chevrolet on them. So uh, again, trying to mimic exactly how the one-to-one -one is. Uh, this one came with the molded in transmission. I actually cut it out, put this plate right here on it. It's not the nicest looking thing, but it does the job because the T10 transmission will cover it right away. Actually, the T10, the T10 transmission is, uh, I painted it black for the time being because I'm unsure if I was going to go with the alkaline or with the metal, well, the model master aluminum. So I just went with uh, black and it actually came out looking very nice um, overall very very detailed this is the Iceman collections um, transmission and so I'm done painting this um, painting all here all this orange um, it'll then just fit on here just like so you won't even be able to see most of the hump here because of how the hump is in the actual uh, chassis with the interior so most of it you won't even see um, there is a little gap right here on the body but when I push this down that gap goes right away and that's how it actually needs to be in order for the window for the glass to fit for the dash to fit that needs to go down and also the hood fits perfectly once that is down right there so that's something I'll need to do when I'm ready for final assembly um, again I'm very happy with how this is coming out. Just, I can't wait to get this done and get to my grandfather and him to see it. And I'm excited to get this uh, get this resin body done. My second resin body I ever built. So I'm definitely excited. This definitely is um, not an easy resin body to do. It, it's it's not um, one that is that doesn't require much work. This one required a lot of work just because of the use of of the mold and but I'm happy I was able to find this because that saved me probably a couple months of having to reconfigure this entire body from a Nomad into this 210. So very happy I was able to find this resin body. So again, thank you for watching and I will see you all in part three.